I've seen a few tutorials online with regards to making a love heart dish and pretty much everyone starts off using a ready made heart shape vector. So I thought I'd make a quick video on how to go about making the actual heart shape so you have the option of designing your own vectors. I'll then use the vector I made to create a simple heart shaped dish. When I made the tutorials I try and keep them as simple as possible so that if you're new to Vectric then there's less chance of running into any issues if you decided to have a go and make the project yourself. So for this project I'm going to keep the dish very basic and just use a couple of tool paths to machine the heart. The video is more about creating the heart vector itself but the dish can easily be improved by engraving it or adding some 3D artwork. So the first thing to do is open up Vectric and click on create a new file. For my job setup it's single sided so I select single sided. Job size for my dish will be 200mm wide by 200mm high and 30mm thick. These could be changed to suit whatever material that you have available. But I had a scrap piece lying around which is around this size already. Now my Z0 position will be the top of the material surface. XY datum position I always like to set in the middle at X0 and Y0. I find it helps me when designing my vectors. The modelling resolution and appearance I'm not too bothered about at the minute and I can change that later on. Now for making the heart shape there's several different ways that I used to use. One of the ways being that I drag the nodes on a circle to create the heart shape but I prefer to use this method and I'll show you now. First thing to do is click on draw rectangle in the create vector section. Set x and y to 0 and anchor point in the middle. The width here will be 60mm and the height 140mm. These measurements can obviously be changed to suit your own taste. What we're looking to do is make a rectangle with a perfectly rounded end. And to do this we just need to select radius external and set the radius to half the width. So although that sounds technical, half of 60 is 30 and will give us the rounded edge that we need. When everything is inputted just click on create and then close the window and you'll see what looks like a baked bean shaped vector. Now click on the rounded rectangle to highlight it and it should turn into a dotted vector. Then under the transform object section click on rotate selected objects. Hovering over the icon will confirm that you're in the right place. As the rectangle is x0 and y0 we can either select x0 and y0 in the coordinates or leave the centre circle checked so the rotation of the rectangle is from the centre. We're going to set the angle to 45 and select absolute. Setting absolute means that the angle will move to 45 degrees even if we accidentally press apply twice. If you select relative then every time you click apply it will rotate by whatever angle that you've selected. So as we need 45 degrees we could in theory select either as long as we start at x0 and y0 and only click apply once. So type in 45 and press apply then close. With the rectangle still selected and dotted go back to transform objects and click on mirror selected objects. If you've deselected the vector just give it a quick click first. Now we can leave use rotated bonds unchecked but check flip about job center and also create a mirrored copy as we want to have both vectors to use. Then click on flip horizontal and you'll now have two bait beans then click close. Press escape on the keyboard to deselect any highlighted vectors. Now at this stage you might be able to spot what's happened and how we get our heart shape vector. If not all will become apparent. On the left hand side under edit objects click on the scissor icon called interactive trim. We need to make sure that the checkbox for rejoin trim section is ticked so that as we cut the vectors the end result will be a vector that's all joined together. So when we move the cursor near the vectors the cursor will turn into an open pair of scissors. Following the video click on the two lower curves with the scissors and they'll disappear. Then click on the two internal lines as I have in the video. You should now be able to see a heart shaped vector and can now close the trim tool window and if you click on the vector you can see that it's all in one complete vector. Now at this point I'm going to resize the heart to fit the piece of wood that I intend to use. To do that I click on the vector and open up set selected object size in the transform object section. Your measurements may differ to mine but you can see the settings that I have on screen and I'm just going to increase the width by 150% and because I've left link XY checked the height also increases by 150% so everything will stay in proportion. Then I close the window once I've pressed apply and deselect the vector by pressing escape. Now you could just use the vector how it is. But I want to make it a little bit more machine and user friendly. I'm going to be using an 8mm down spiral cutter to profile cut the wood. So to make things easier on the tool I'm going to make sure that my tool follows a nice smooth curve at the top of the heart. I've placed an 8mm circle at the top to represent the 8mm cutter. So you can see what I mean by adding a curve for it to follow. You could leave it as it is but I just like to have smooth tool paths for my cutters to follow. All I need to do is select fillet in the edit object section. Highlight normal fillet. 
and setting it to 4mm will give me a nice curve for the cutter to follow as you can see here. You just need to drag the crosshair to the point and when you see a tick just press the mouse button. Now I'm also going to do the same to the point at the bottom of the vector. The point on the heart looks nice but it can cause issues when machining and a slight curve is a little safer for the end user. Clicking zoom active view at the top puts us back to the full slate and I'll delete the circle I created. People have their own preference to how a heart vector might look, so playing around with all the above should get you the shape that you prefer. But I'm happy with this and I'll now create the internal vector so I can use it to create the wall of the dish and remove the material within the dish. So I highlight the vector by clicking it and select offset from the left hand window. I want the vector inside the one that I've already created so I highlight inwards and select the thickness I want which is partly aesthetic and partly practical. I'm going to go with 5mm leaving all of the other boxes unchecked and click offset and then close and escape to deselect the vectors. You'll notice that the inner vector follows the outer vector nicely but at the bottom it's a little bit pointy. Now I'm not overly fussed about this as the tool will still create the curve but it won't match the ads curve precisely but it'll be close enough for this project. So all that's left to do now is create the toolpaths. Clicking on the switch to toolpath command at the top opens up the toolpath window on the right hand side. Now this is where this is probably different for everyone as we all use different tools and settings and some people will require tabs on the profile cut, others might not if you've got a good vacuum table so I don't go into too much depth here. But I select the inner vector and click on the pocket toolpath. You can see my setting here. Now I'm using a Wielden Tools 8mm down cut spiral with an offset conventional cut 25mm deep and you can see the result in the simulation. The offset cut works well but because it'll cut across the grain at various angles it will leave light scratches in the wood and sometimes these can be a real pain to remove. If you remove the material following the grain that pretty much removes this issue but for this project I've left it as it is. For the profile cut I'll need to make sure that I cut on the outside and I'm going to use the same cutter for ease. For the purpose of this simulation I'll not be adding the tabs but when it comes to machining I'll definitely have to. So you can see how the finished piece looks in this simulation. Fingers crossed the 5mm wall will be thick enough, but we'll soon find out as I'll now take the G-code to the CNC to machine the piece. Now obviously this is quite a basic piece, but it could be jazzed up with engraving if needs be. But it's just a nice simple project to make and could make a suitable Valentine's gift filled with poor puree, sweets or chocolates. And for that reason I always finish with a food safe oil or leave unfinished depending on which wood I use. <laughs> A quick routing of the edges, a good sanding and a colour coats of oil and it's all finished. If you have any questions about the project feel free to ask and thanks for watching. Prior to making the videos on YouTube, I worked as a firefighter for nearly 20 years, serving my community and helping to save lives and promote the fire safety message. Unfortunately, an accumulation of many upsetting scenes became too much for my mind to cope with, and after years of failed therapy, I was retired from the service on the grounds of ill health and signed off medically from any employment. To keep myself busy, both body and mind, I developed an interest in woodworking and car mechanics and with already having a hobby in filming and music, I combined my interest and started making videos here on YouTube, filming, editing and composing my own music for my woodworking and car restoration channels Smugwood and Smugwood Mini. Unfortunately, to produce such videos comes at a price, and with minimal funds after being retired from employment, I've turned to Patreon to see if there is additional support out there which could allow me to continue making the woodworking and car restoration videos. 
In return for support, there are various levels which are explained in more depth at the Patreon link below, but includes the chance to win one of my YouTube projects made throughout the year, and also inclusion into random prize draws open to patrons only. In addition, I'd like to thank everybody who already subscribes to my channels, or watches, comments, likes and shares them as it all goes to help support my channels, and for that I'm really appreciative. It's my hope that I can continue making the videos for the foreseeable future. Thanks once again for your continued support.